Brick the center block coming through the walls, busting through the walls. Yes, who was? Uh, Inmates. <laughs> huh. Yeah. So yeah. dudes was getting jugged up. Going through the wall. <laughs> getting raped. Listen at me. Going getting through the raped. wall. Going listen through the wall, man. Man, listen, man. Yeah. That is a world inside of a world, man. Yes. Welcome, everybody. This is Scott with Penitentiaries to Penthouse Podcast. Yes, sir. I'm your host. To the left of me, we got Mr. Beatty. Your best friend in real estate. To the right of me, we got our guest, Mr. Kiana Calloway. Swag out. What's happening? Special gentleman he is. And then we got my partner over here to the left, Mr. Shane Big Johnson. Shane. Yes, sir. Shane. Yes, sir. 24 to... years successful now. There you uh. go. Um, we look forward to, to digging into today's message uh, Kiana, man, has a, a powerful story. Uh, how I know Kiana is uh, we work on a project together through the Justice and Accountability Center of Louisiana. And basically that's a nonprofit organization full of attorneys and policy people who uh, march down to the state capitol every year. Shout out uh, JAC. JAC. Um, and uh, they do legislative work, so they propose bills, work with uh, lobbyists, senators, representatives uh, to pass criminal legal reform bills. Uh, the specific focus, though, um, is usually expungement legislation. Uh, yes, for those of you who don't know what expungement legislation is, expungements are the things that guys like myself, Kiana, Mr. Shane over there need yes, once sir. we come home to... Uh, for opportunities, whether it's employment, housing, life insurance, you name it, there's a there's hundreds of things that we get denied for on, on a regular basis based on the fact that we made some mistakes in our lives. And, uh, you know, we've paid our time, we've paid our debt, and uh, we're, we're trying to get past that. So the, the work that we're doing uh, revolves around expungements and, and, A, changing expungement law, but, B, getting the knowledge and uh, information out there because – the average Joe that comes home from prison don't even uh, know about don't it. know about expungements. Don't know how to go about getting expungements. Yes. Furthermore, I am ex one. Yeah, exactly, and, and they're expensive as hell. Yeah. You know, you could uh, easily rack up if you have multiple felonies, several thousand dollars just in paying the state, the district attorneys, and the clerks of courts office. Not even including legal counsel. So that's the work that the Justice and Accountability Center do. Uh, but me and Kiana are working on a project to get the expungement app through Justice and Accountability Center, the information there, uh, out. So we're going to be traveling, presenting workshops, getting the information out there so that yes, people sir. can access uh, expungements equitably. So plug in, man. Like, we're going to be in your in your areas very, very soon. Uh, just being able to uh, alleviate one of the collateral consequences that come after incarceration Uh I think that we're doing our part, and it will be doing ourselves a disservice, Scott, if we're not traveling, educating people Absolutely. about the work that we're putting in uh, in the state capitol, uh, and keeping them informed that you know there's issues that you can get plugged into, but you just need to reach out. You know, we can't right. do this in our silos. Yep. Uh, it's an honor to have ran into a like-minded brother uh, that that's that's putting in work. You know, on the outside the bars. You know what I'm saying? Because you are what you do. Yes. Yep. Uh, Amen. Even when the camera's not on, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. It's easy to look good on camera. It's, yeah, it, it's hard yeah, to make it happen yeah. on the outside, but that's what I like to do. I'm just passionate about, and, j and just like you, uh, passionate uh, about making sure that people have opportunities, man, because uh, I was given opportunities, uh, and I've had a lot of challenges, man, and, and I just want to see people be able to breeze through that process instead of getting caught in the hiccups. But... Um, so I, I do want to highlight a very successful human being today. Um, as I said, I, I was able to and had the fortunate privilege of watching Kiana's documentary that's coming out real soon on yes, a sir. very, very national level. Yes, sir. Um, and, uh, and I told him today, and, and, and it's hard to get me to, to break down, right? And like, shit, I told him man tears. <laughs> uh, but uh, man, I watched it, dude, and they had some parts in it that I was just like, and I and, and it really, it'll really hit you. But, um, you know, he's he's had a, a very, very challenged life, uh, Some a lot of injustices, I, and, and I'm gonna let him explain that, but you know, the, a lot of people see the uh, part of the justice system that 
WAFB and whatever your local news channel posts yes. up there about people who commit yes. crimes and uh, yes. and and their wrongs or whatever. But they don't talk about all those mug shots that they post where guys really didn't do what they were being accused of. And, and yes. I'm gonna let Kiana take it from here. But if you don't mind, could you just kind of share a little bit about your upbringing? And then what caused you or what led to the prison? And then uh, we'll just kind of take it from there. Well, actually, the system led me to prison. Right. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, we have to understand that the system um, was built to do exactly what it's doing. You know, mm -hmm. People say the system messed up. No, it's not messed up. It's doing exactly what it was scripture to do. Mm -hmm. So we must always, you know, bring that, that bring that energy back into the space. And just so happened that... I have been resilient enough to really uh, surpass the tests uh, that the system has caused upon my life. I've seen uh, individuals in the same space, same situation, same cell, uh, and six months later they hung themselves because right. they can't handle right. uh, the stresses or the, or the, or the, or the traumatic uh, expressions about being, one, either formally uh, c accused and convicted of a crime or two just trying to figure out like damn is this my life mm -hmm. you know is is this what I'm supposed to be but uh, not to get too deep into that because like the, my my documentary it basically shows resiliency right. it shows the true test of time like you can go through these hard spaces uh, but you have to be prepared to bounce back because everybody Amen. bounce back. Amen. So what you're referring to is the school to prison pipeline? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, everybody bounce back. Explain the school to prison pipeline. School to prison pipeline. Okay, so, um, uh, and I, I'm, I'm going to give it to you in layman terms. Let's go. The I am layman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, that I sounds am, like a good movie title. I, 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 I am layman. I am he. Layman. Okay, <laughs> definitely. So so school to prison pipelines. I went to prison at 16 years old. Right. Uh, so if I was tested in the second or third grade and I read below a, a certain level, they built another cell for me. And just the way that it, it planned out, I ended up in that cell, that school of prison pipeline. Uh, if we understand the way that our Americas is functioning, uh, three, main thing, three, three main attributes of, of human survival, education, travel, and should I say I'll throw uh, 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 manufacturing in the building, right? So planes, the way planes first started, it crunk up, it crunk up, like, you know, but now the evolution of planes is that it just take off, right. you know, they could probably put it on autopilot, they ain't got to do nothing but land it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and it's crazy, man, the car, you know, it crunk up, now you push start. Right. Why education is still the same? You sit in the single file line, they teach you A, B, C, one, two, three, and it's never, it never gives the whole individuality of the, indiv of the person. So when we speak about school or prison pipeline, I walked through a metal detector when I was going to ele elementary school. Mm. If, if this is an educational institution, they should be focused on my education and not my protection or not my apprehension in so many different ways. Uh, we, we learn how to stand in the single file line. Walk in the child hall, cafeteria, what did you do? Right. You stood in the single file line and you walked to the child hall. I understand the level of control, but that's how institutionalized that we can be. People never have been to prison and are more institutionalized than someone that spent 50 years in the junk. Concrete walls, fluorescent lighting. Hey. Colors. Yeah. Hey. White. Light. Blue. Light, 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 hey. Light blue. Hey. Hey. So, light so, so to kind of... Uh, so well, I guess give a, the, that short synopsis of school to prison pipeline. So at a young age, you experienced that. We all do. It's a program. Uh, and, and, and it's a then, program. Which eventually led to. So, um, and even since those days of um, single file lines, um, straight line education, um, as today we pump 72% of our state's budget into incarcerating someone instead of the education piece of it. It's only 13% or sometimes 7% of the budget goes to the adequate education of our right. youth. So right. that shows the level of, um, should I say, uh, support. Or focus. Dependence, focus. codependence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any word that we want to kind of put into that space because we must understand that it's systems that we're dealing with. You know, these systems Not that individuals. we're dealing with, these systems that we're dealing with um, has to be dismantled, and it has to be dismantled from the inside. Uh, and Scott just said that we had the, we have the privilege of working on the new task force, um, the Safe and Alternative Task Force, 
uh, which is a governmental task force that we that was structured through last year's legislation, uh, which gives us the opportunity to properly plan the effects of not only expungements but solitary con- the use of solitary confinement inside of our jails and prisons right. in the state of Louisiana. Right. Uh, and it's sitting at these tables with the state attorney, with the <laughs> secretary of state, and the, the secretary of Department of Corrections. Uh, I really start to understand that we are the experts in this field. Like people are holding these positions and really don't know. Mm-hmm. They really don't know the outlook of um, putting the face to incarceration. That's right. what, like, that's what we need to try to understand. Like, who are we incarcerating? How can we how can we lead the nation? Uh, uh, <laughs> how can we lead the nation in crime? But we have the highest incarceration rate. Yeah, we have to. Let me kind of bring this back. How can we be less in the nation in education, but highest in, in the crime. nation yeah. in crime and in, in incarceration? So, uh, so um, the going back to your you. You being sentenced at a young age or going to jail or prison at a young age, can you kind of share with us like what happened and then uh, kind of jump into your oh, uh, experience? So I, um, I'm, a, I'm a XYZ because a lot of it is in the film. Yeah, definitely don't want to. Yeah, don't do a spoiler. Spoiler. yeah, I don't want to do a spoiler alert. Yeah. But uh, man, I'm um, I look at my life as not a needle in a haystack. You know what I mean? Yes, I was. Uh, falsely apprehended, falsely accused, falsely convicted, sentenced to two life sen- sentenced to two lives, without the possibility of probation, parole, or suspension of sentence. Um, was ha- was set in the trial for my life to be deliberated on. Like you either gonna get life in prison or we are gonna send you to death row. Um, wow. wow. So and that this is at the age of sixteen, just you making had to seventeen. Swallow all that at the age of sixteen. I had to. I had to swallow all of that, and now I have the opportunity to regurgitate that. Yeah. You know, because now my 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 pain is turning into passion. Mm-hmm. You know, right. it's turning into my why. That's right. why I love waking up every morning. That's why I love opening my refrigerator. That's why I love playing with my daughter. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to my baby mama. Shout out to my fiance. Yeah. Shout, shout out. out to you know. I definitely yes. got to say what's up, I'm T. Yes. Uh, I love you. Uh, a lot of these things that's taking place right now, I wouldn't do it without you on my side. So, Amen. yeah, definitely throw that in the space. Uh, but uh, yeah, man, the, the the evolution of life. Sometimes, like even riding up here today, I've never been to Denver Springs a day in my life, but it felt like an epiphany. You know, getting off of this bridge, making this exit. I'm like, dang, they got a canes right here. <laughs> I, I was tasting canes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's basically trying to figure out. Like I am walking in the in the in the in the, in the steps of my higher power, my divine energy. You know what I mean? When I was laying in the cell and I was like, God, man, right. something got to happen. Right. I woke up the next day and I woke up the next day right. and I woke up the next day. So I'm looking at that right now. Like if we can kind of just think back to our prophetic, our prophetic um, l- literature that, that's in the books. Um, and I'll say the Bible, basics and inst- basic instructions before leaving earth. That's a, that's the acronyms that I placed on it. Okay. And in this and inside of this book, they have stories of great men. That's dope. I placed myself inside of these great men while I was in that cell, looking at the excuse me, looking at these center block walls. I had a fifty five inch TV, right? So I, I read the story of Paul. Paul was a gangster. Paul wrote probably 85% of the book. And he right. marked the whole lot Man, of he was a gangster. <laughs> Paul used to rob. Paul used to steal. Right. Paul, Paul used to kill. Paul was taking wives. Like, that's for me. Right. Let me get that. Move around. He was more definitely <laughs> yeah, Move around. Yeah. Let me he get that. A lot. Let me get that. Paul was incarcerated over 75% of his existence. Yes. And wrote a good portion. And he was of the a New great Testament. man. Paul was incarcerated seventy five percent of his existence. He was a great man. And he wrote books that stand the test of time till today. Yeah. Prophetic hymns, uh, metaphorical, metaphorical narrow narratives that any culture can take and put it into their own existence. Every line, every piece, every scripture, every sentence, every dot, every comma means something. That's what we need to pay attention to in life. Every comma means something. So if I if I had to trade my 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 chicken plate so I could get on the phone, <laughs> see people don't understand that type of narrative, though. Tell, people tell, people don't understand that right. type of narrative. Tell, you see what I'm saying? Tell everybody. Tell the layman's what, what what that means. So so I, I spent I spent 18 months in one of the most. D 
dehumanizing places that ever could been created for a human being, and that was Camp J. Okay. And go to Louisiana. Angola, Angola, Louisiana, the farm, right? Yes. So, cool to one right. Cell eleven, they got they got cell ten. Cell eleven was the last cell. They had a guy named Money that slept on side of me for ten months. Every morning he woke up singing, "It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know a change." Is that money from uh, RCC? No, not that money. This is the old money. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know you're talking about money. 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 Name was Alpha Baker. Money was in when I went to Camp J. Money had all been in Camp J for like 14 years at this time. Wow. He got caught in up cell block? In, in that same cell. Wow. In that same cell. That's wow. why I fight for solitary confinement today. Yeah, talk a little bit about that, about because uh, I did hear uh, you mention uh, about solitary confinement kind of mm-hmm. messed you up. So mm-hmm. make sure to touch on that. But, uh, yeah, solitary confinement, man, you, you'll go crazy sitting in the I've cells. I've seen it, literally. I've seen how, did, it. How, how did it affect you? Hold on, hold on. Chicken for the phone. Oh yeah. Okay. Chicken okay. for the phone. Okay. Keep okay. us on. Keep yeah. us on point, right? No, here. no. I'm okay. done. We talking trays. So, what are we? So doing? here we go. So here we go. We talking trays. So I was in Camp J, right? Uh, the man had come down shift change six and six. We know shift change. Six o'clock man come down. Who won't use the phone? Friday. What's on Friday? Chicken. 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 Exactly. Who won't use the phone? Everybody hands coming out the bar. Right. Okay. Let me get them plates. How many people not getting the chicken plate? Hmm. <laughs> I didn't talk. Listen, I didn't talk to my mom. This is the guard. A, this is a guard. He's trying to eat. He getting chicken so he could swing it on the other side of the till. You have to make. They got Joe's. Uh, they got Joe's around the corner. Yeah. So you know it's a whole situation yeah. here. I have. If you only get one phone call every thirty days in Camp J at this time. Really? Right? So I haven't talked to my. Then this was in ninety eight. So my mom got diagnosed with breast cancer. You seen? The, you seen the space? My mom got diagnosed with breast cancer. I didn't know. For like two and a half years, that she was even, I just she comes to see me one time and her head was bald. I didn't know wow. what was going on. She and then didn't tell you nothing. She still didn't tell me that. She just broke down crying. But I'm like, baby, don't worry about it. We got this. You know, right. I'm gonna be able to give you your roses while you're still here. Shout out, mom. She's still home and every day. Shout out. Yes, right. I give her her right. roses while Big she's still woman. here. Big if love. you can see, my life resolve revolve around the strength of this of this queen. And it shows, you know right. what I mean? And right. I'm going to try to amplify that to the best of my ability. Shout out, Mom. I love you. Uh, but anyway, so I haven't talked to my mom in like three months at this time. You know what I mean? Like, what's going on? Every time I call, now I know that she was going through chemo. So she didn't even want to get on the phone weary. So I'm talking to my sister. I'm talking to my brother. Everybody I'm talking to my up. nephews. I'm talking to everybody but moms. I know. Mm-hmm. I know. I know mm-hmm. something ain't right. Something mm-hmm. ain't right. She never did this. This is the only... And I was blessed my entire 17 years. Well, I spent 17 years in prison as a result of that conviction. Uh, and was and still have 17 years on parole. I'm currently on parole. Unjustly. Unjust. Unjust. And currently on parole. Wow. Uh, have six years remaining. Been home 11 years. So um, that was the only, that was like my main source of everything. Every month, Molly Diggs sent $100 to my account. Every month Word. for 17 years. Word. Learn. Man, if that's, that's not a blessing, that's if a that's blessing. not a blessing, you know what I'm saying? That's within itself, because people, I used to, man, I used to take my hundred and split it down the middle so I could feed. You was on the dome. Yeah. You know what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. You know how it go. You yeah. know, believe me, I do. This work that I'm doing out here, this is work that was prophetically uh, uh, distributing and, and manifesting itself in the can. Right. I love brothers. Like I love you. I lo- I love. You know what I'm saying? Like it's how we do this. It's work that we got to do. But I'd be damned if I ch- trade my chicken plate again, though. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be damned if I trade that no. chicken plate hey, again. Look, man. Uh, no surrender. Since we're talking about solitary, man, um, if you if you don't mind just kind of sharing a little bit about, uh, A, how it affected you, how long you stayed in solitary, and then kind of kind of tell the folks out there um, what solitary does to the mind. Mm. Cause I, I have my own personal experience. I've mm. spent eleven months in solitary myself, mm. sitting in cells. Uh, but I want to hear your your take on it, and then I'll kind of chime in with mine. Okay, so you want you want my professional take, or you want my personal experience? Personal, personal. experience. Personal. Okay, okay, okay. And keep okay, it for okay. the who? Layman? Yeah, layman's okay. please. Layman's please. So, so name of the next movie. <laughs> <laughs> Only for the layman. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so when we're when we're speaking about solitary confinement, let me put a definition to that first right Right. so solitary confinement is a 
person placed in the one or two man cell for 23 hours or more without the ability of education, personal contact, uh, uh, air, exercise, everything that you are being deprived of. So I'll just say deprived of all liberty and growth um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with no access to, 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 to human contact. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. So basically, uh, the first time that you are apprehended, when you get into a police car and they put the handcuffs on you and you go to a holding tank, let's call that solitary confinement. Some people may be placed in the cell with 14 people. Some people may be placed in the cell with two. Some people may be placed in the cell with one. Okay, so the effects of solitary confinement. So what we're we're triggering here in Louisiana is the term post-incarceration syndrome. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that is is when a person who has spent a long time inside of any incarceral state has mental, mental transformations that may impede the normal ways of thinking. What is the normal ways of thinking? So now that's that's where the tunnel the tunnel comes in. It could be a mental disorder. It could be some similar to post traumatic stress disorder. It right. could be like we right. you, you could deal with you could deal with uh, insomnia. You could deal with, with with claustrophobia. You could deal with depression. You can deal with anxiety. anxiety. Like there's so many different triggers. yes. Mm-hmm. There's so many so million many triggers. ways that you can kind of figure it out. So when I first came home, I knew what I experienced personally. When I go to the when I go to the bathroom, I take one leg out my on my on my um, yeah to take me a, yeah, to right. take me a crap. Why I do that? Because <laughs> when I was in prison, I knew I had to be on guard at all times. Oh, ten every day. Yeah, you can't stand up and fight with uh, with your pants down. No, you it's not gonna have happen. Free access to move around. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. So so the thing about it is so the thing about it is when I came home, I still was continuing those traits until I realized, man, I could take my pants off. I can you know. I could sl- I could just slide them down right here. Nobody gonna come in the door and do me nothing, right? When I sit down to eat, my arms on the table and I'm doing what I'm doing because I know I gotta be finished before this last dude sit down. Right. That's a trigger for us. Right. We all eat fast. Right. Yeah. I so, suffer for me right now. I, I still do. I've been home nine years and I eat faster than hmm. most people. I'm right. like, I'm in and out like that. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, I I, I, I kind of compiled a lot of triggers that I identified as being uh, post traumatic effects of incarceration. So from your your stints in the cell blocks and the yes, cell that, yes, how was your how was your uh, smell sounds uh, certain certain things that I that I touch mm-hmm. uh, certain things that touch me mm-hmm. certain mm-hmm. certain people that get around I can't let nobody sit behind me while I'm in the car mm-hmm. if I'm in the movie theater mm-hmm. like it's a, I can't go to a club like a lot of those things uh, was affecting me so during COVID this 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 way I'm really going this way forty for forty came into place. During COVID, I said, you know what? The only way I'm going to understand my problem, because I know it's a problem, but when I look around, I'm like, well, shit, what is normal? They, you know, I feel like I'm not normal, but I see this dude here. He, been, he never been nowhere, but he more fucked up than me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He got issues. He got problems. You've been out here forever and you calling me every day asking me for twenty dollars, fifteen dollars. Right. Your, your daughter needs shoes, right. you know? But not not shame. Not no, me, no, no, I'm just, just saying yeah, in just, general. I just want to clarify in case <laughs> the lady, they're like, the lady. Damn, shame's a mooch. <laughs> Damn. Uh, yeah. Nah, but yeah. I'm just saying, so um just to kinda just to kind of figure it out. So I traveled around Louisiana. I talked to over two hundred and seventy five individuals and we talked about Ever anything from, and all of them was formerly incarcerated people. And that's where forty. For that's 40. where forty for forty worldwide came into that's during dope. COVID. That's dope. I knocked on doors. I, I I took the camera to meet them where they were. Yes. And we're gonna talk about where you came from to become who you are today. Right. And every individual that I talk to, they talk about every situation that I'm that I've experienced, or in situations that I may stumble across in the future, mm-hmm. and it gave me possible solutions that I could pull logic from. And I'm like, damn, what can I do with this project? Okay, we're going to name it 40 for 40 Worldwide because I'm going to pull 40 of the f- most influential sp- um, pieces out of this space and I'm going to build a campaign in Louisiana that would allow people to come home and holistically heal. Right. 
whether it be through arts, whether it be through whether it be through song, whether it be through through poetry, whether it be through broadcast, whether it be through construction, whether it be through you know what I mean, like welding, whether it be through any mechanism. I, I feel like we can do that as a channel. We can do that as a as a body of individuals. Okay. So forty for forty worldwide was to amplify the voices of formerly incarcerated people that have been through horrendous events in their life while serving time. Uh, ultimately gaining momentum to build 40 other individuals in 40 other states to implement some type of federal legislation that will add people returning home from incarceration into a protected class. Because there are over 40,000 collateral consequences that stop you from getting a job, from going to school, from getting insurance, you know what I'm saying, from going to real estate school. It's so much that hinders you. It seems like People returning home from incarceration is the only social group that America still have permission to openly hate. I got denied for life insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even get life insurance. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So how how can we how can we how can we humanize this space? Because in Louisiana, one out of every three individuals have been impacted by incarceration. Yes. And we right here, three out of five. And I don't know if you if if the cameraman have a buddy or a sister or a brother, or if, even if he's been to prison. I'm just lucky I ain't been. Right, so exactly. Caught, you <laughs> you oh, see what I'm saying? It's going back to the uh, solitary thing, how, how long would you say in your 17 years that you spent just in solitary, not in dormitories, but solitary so confinement? So solitary confinement, I've probably, sp- out of 17 years, I've spent probably eight and a half, close to nine. In in solitary? In, in solitary. Um, years? In, in Camp J, yes. Damn. Years. In Camp J, I spent uh, <sighs> close to 19 months, and that was just from 1998 to 2000. When I first made it to Angola about me being a juvenile, they put me in the cell. You know, they let me out to go in the little dog pen for a while. That's uh, what it is. And that was pen. basically for a year, you know. And then after that, minor offenses, because now I'm a boy transforming into a man in the man institution. You got to uh, prove something. It, it's not really proving it. It's just making sure that they don't prove me. Mm-hmm. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. So I'm not here to prove who I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not here. And that's the type of person that I have been is that I'm not here to prove that I'm a man. I'm here to prove that you're not going to fuck with me. Yeah, yeah. You know why? Because much respect is given, much respect is required. Yes. You see what I'm saying? So that's how I that's how I walk in life. Like, I can have a relationship with Shane, and I can have a re- relationship with Scott, and at the same time, my relationship with Shane and Scott is going to be identical because y'all deal with me identical. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? I'm not going dif- to differ- differentiate anything dealing with any situation in life. When I first went to Angola, my first time in the field, they called me Looney Tune. I, my number was 37 22 20. I'll never forget it. I was at the end of the line. We in a line of 375 people, do stuff with tools on their hand. Yes. And every time that man looked around, they was hearing, kah, kah. you know why? Because I'm in the back trying to keep up. Man, that dude crazy. Come here, Looney Tune. You're you going to oh, shoot the you. Yeah. The shotguns on yeah, the Yeah, because I can't yeah. keep up with the host. I got locked up. Every day my first month in the field. Right. I can't keep up with the host. What'd you say, Deuce Deuce? That's uh what's that mean? That mean they line that mean they lined up in tools. Okay. They okay. lined up I in knew tools. That. I knew that. You're not that lame, man. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, hey, for man. The viewers, that, for, for the viewers. For the, for the viewers. Hey, and, uh, for the viewers. For the viewers out there that don't know, when you go to a Louisiana Department of Corrections, a state penitentiary. Hmm. You go onto the field when you get there. You're and picking and, cotton, man. Actually, we had a we got fat on here the other day, and he told his story about how they tried to make him go out there and pick cotton. You're picking man. cotton, man. Or you gonna ride like fat? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. But, I'm uh, telling you. So, so as a coach, is your number two, one. Huh? Camp J was so brutal that they yes, shut it down. They closed us on yeah. yeah, I had I had hand in that. I had a hand in that. Talk about it. I had a hand in that, man. So uh, it was a campaign. This was in 2000. No, that was in 2013. We're talking about the shutting down of Camp J, yeah, if you didn't hear. Camp J is solitary confinement. 2013. It started in 2008. Yeah, the, 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 the campaign started in eight. The campaign started in eight. It actually got shut down in 13. 13. It got so shut down. So basically, man, uh, just being able to, to, to lay in those cells and be like, man, this shit here ain't right. Somebody, I wish I had some people standing out fighting and fussing for me. You know what I mean? So when I came home, my first objective is how can I get engaged? How can I get involved? You know, what can I do? And, man, I, I really would like to salute again 
it's gonna be a shout out hour. You heard me shout out and vote Norris Henderson. Yes. Norris. Been putting up, been put, up. Yeah, check out. Matter of fact, uh Will. Norris brother just just got killed, man. So Saw we're gonna that. lift him up, little daddy, man. Uh, yes. salute the little daddy. We lost a oh, soldier. I the daddy. We lost a soldier, man. But definitely, um, I would like to give a vote a shout out on this space. Um, they've been holding it down. Long time doing fighting work yeah. that, that most people yeah. a don't want to do, but b they can't do. And and those guys all formerly incarcerated yeah. are leading the pack on the criminal legal reform work in Louisiana. They got their hands in every yeah. dang near every piece of legislation yeah. that goes yeah. in front of yeah. state yeah. capital for criminal legal reform. They built to reform. do that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, they just opened up the little building too, right? Yeah, yeah. definitely. This year. So I was a I was a uh, I was a volunteer for vote when I first got into the game. You know what I'm saying? Like in 2012, 2013, uh, we did we did a lot of we did a lot of work we did a lot of work around restoring the voting rights for formerly incarcerated people in Louisiana. Um, so six three six. Yeah, Act six three six. Act six three six. Then they had a campaign to end solitary confinement in Kent J. Well, no, 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 no. This was kind of before. This was the Camp J space. I was on some freelance stuff. Oh, okay. I had kind of. I partnered with. Uh, I partnered with uh, uh, the village. The village. The village. The village keepers. That was the name of them in Jefferson Parish. I partnered with the village keepers, and they were doing some work around solitary confinement in Jefferson Parish. Uh, so the work that I did toward Camp J was basically I told my story twice. Uh, how it was. Inf- how it was inhumane and. Uh, how I laid in the cells and really like phantom and wondered if people were really out there putting in work and uh, I, I didn't have the opportunity to speak at the Capitol but I knocked on some doors and passed out some flyers okay. uh, got people involved right. uh, did a lot of work toward that end but that was basically a back end thing because DOC was ready to kind of you know make amends with that space yeah. you know what I mean like it was it was man it was a, it was a dungeon right. you know what I'm saying it was, was it like was hell kind of reparation for people yeah it was hell like, it was hell it was hell so what they did what they did when, in in 08 was they shut down they shut down the boot tears in 2008 they shut down the shark tears the shark tears were uh they were like cells inside of a cell you got the cells and then you had the big old boot that slammed boom slam in the front with the little tray slot right there, and that's all you had to to like really move around. And so in oh wait, wait, wait. in other states, oh yeah, definitely. So I, I'm I'm trying to picture my own experience in solitary. So when I've been on it, it's a cell block. Like like mm-hmm. is it something different than that? It's, I haven't it's been a, on camp. So, so this yes. is this is this is the view. So um, a lot of people may not picture this, but you can you can get it. So if you're walking down the Beavers mm-hmm. working cell yeah, block, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So imagine, imagine you you take half of the hall out where the cell, where the cells are, are originally at, where the cell doors are originally yeah, yeah. at. You take ha- half of that tier out and you bring that out further with concrete blocks, Jeez. like a concrete steel block will come yeah. all the way out, and on that concrete block you have a steel door that slam boom wow. with the clack, 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 clack. you know. So you walk in, you come through that door. And then you walk down that narrow hall, maybe halfway from here to like that door, mm-hmm. right. and then the cells open, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and then you go in the cell. So they, so they lock don't the rack cells. Them back or like they that. no, they don't. They don't rack them back until they come through the cell, and then handcuff and shackle you. Then they come step out of that that boot door wow. and rack them back and rack them back closed. Now you just in the space, and then they open up the big door. In other you know states, saying? in other states like states like Illinois and Chicago or uh, 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 Indiana, they call them two door cells. Right, because you have your first door, open that up. When they walk in, it's like maybe six feet of space. Mm-hmm. The officer walk to this, you know, walk to that, to that cell, handcuff you, shackle you, and everything, and then leaves you out. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 uh. And mind you, if something were to happen in your cell, whether it's medical. Or oh, if yeah. you're sharing, I don't know how Camp J is. I don't do that yeah, share that's, space. That's, that's one. That's one, 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 one man's But if something was going down in the cell. And uh, not only are you are you behind bars, but you're also behind this this barricaded uh, force. You're hit. Uh, yes. You have no way of getting in touch with the guards to come. Hey, I'm having a heart attack. Can't even hear you. They can't hear you. Can't even hear no. you. They can't hear you. No. So you're just left to die. If if and and a lot of people that are on Camp J are awaiting uh, trials, uh, especially if they're high profile cases mm-hmm. uh, and and different things like that. They might not necessarily be. Guilty of the crime, but they're sitting back there and they can possibly die because a mm-hmm. uh, all types of things happen medically when oh, they become man. incarcerated. They was coming through the walls, breaking center blocks, coming right? through the walls, busting through the walls. Yes, who uh, inmates? <laughs> huh? Yeah, 
Oh, the inmates. They bust through. They could bust through the walls. But they come get you. Yes. Oh wow. Yes. If they want you, they bust. They coming through the walls. I'm they, talking about. There's yes. so many times that they had to replaster the center blocks. So they just going get malls and coming through. Coming through malls. No. You, How they getting through? Talking about right. You can use. Yeah, you can use. You can, you can use. You can oh, use. Oh, you talking about sitting on side? You talking about you, the guy on the next so, side? So, 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 so in 1998 they took the 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 the, the block. You know, in the, the work. Yeah. You know, in the cell block they have the flap. Right. Where you put yeah. your, your stuff in there, yep. you take that up out of there and you can go through the wall. Yes. No shit. Yeah, you can go through the wall. So, yes. dudes was getting jugged up? Going through the wall. <laughs> getting raped? Listen at me, going getting through the raped. wall. Going listen through the wall. Wow, man. Man, listen, man, yeah. that is a world inside of a world, man. Yes. Yes. You know, so being being mindful enough, and that's what I mean by you guys are survivors. You know, I, I didn't acknowledge I didn't acknowledge my my self my self worth. I, I didn't acknowledge my value, but I think my job now is to pump that into you guys because y'all are survivors and y'all are experts in the way that this criminal justice world is about to be reformed. We can't keep, continue to let a lot. We can't continue to allow people to plan meals for tables that they never slid a, a seat under. That's right. How can you give me cheese and I'm lactose intolerant? I don't eat cheese and ice cream. I can't deal with that. Right. You see what I'm saying? But right. you're still putting that on my table when you wonder why I got diarrhea. Because you just don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you wonder why know. I got That's diarrhea. A nice yeah, you wonder why I got diarrhea. You wonder why my communities are under resourced. I got to go find it. You know, I can't buy toilet paper, so I'm going to come shit on your lawn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know, I'm just trying to figure it like that because that's what we gotta understand, man. Like, life is about who we are. Like, we are life. We are the movers and shakers. We create every sphere, every business. Like, the United States of America is a 501c3 organization. It is a nonprofit. We bought into that when we were born. Our family signed our birth certificates and social security cards and sell and put us into this into this entity. You feel what I'm saying? So we have to understand. We need to pull control of that entity. Use our democracy. Get out there and vote and put people in positions who have your best interests at heart. Don't, don't just come Amen. to my house and, and shit and shoot some, put a t uh, you know, shoot right. me some sugar, you know what right. I'm saying? And now I'm walking, I got a banana in my tailpipe. I'm right. blowing up every time I go somewhere. Right. It's crazy, and that's what we're allowing. That's what we're, that's what we have been allowing. And I hope that people understand that this work I do. I can't put a tag on it, bro. I, I, I do everything. I do reform. I do litigation. I do policy. I do programs. I do training. I hold peer support groups, like the same groups that we held inside with Project Detour. Shout out. Shout, Shout out. out Project, Project Detour. Detour. That's right. That was started in RCC. Turn, turn around and show the back. Yeah, that's Can right. Can you turn around? Yeah. Can you? I could, but we're gonna uh, we're gonna sure. wait till yeah, the we'll end. We're we'll gonna get a clip, shot. We'll at clip the end. it later. Callaway. We'll clip it later. Yeah. Like a whole baseball player. Definitely, man. Right. But yeah, this is he this hitting home runs. This was a this was an organization that we started in Rayburn, man, in yeah. RCC. Okay. We started this in RCC, and we seen the we seen the impact on the individuals on the tier with RCC us. is Rayburn Correctional Center in Angie, Louisiana. It's a state penitentiary. Yes, yes, and we seen the impact on individuals on the compound. People that didn't give a. A uh, 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 ratting ass about nothing. Give us an example of one of the guys. Reggie. Quitan? Reggie. Quitan? Yes. Okay, yeah. Reggie was in the block. I matter of fact, Reggie Reggie's in Austin right now. Okay, I knew he moved out there. Yeah, he stayed in Austin. I seen him when I I, I, I was on a uh, fellowship with Red F. Shout out Red F. That's my accelerator teaching me how to turn my business into a business. Yeah. Uh right. yeah, I needed that, you know, just just floating on the wings, man. I wanna say, yeah, man. Ooh, I did like eighty hours of I did like eighty hours of training in like four days. But Who anyway, is this? Red F Red F Accelerator is that a program? Or That's a, guy? a program. I'm a fellowship. I'm okay. part of a fellowship. Red F Accelerator. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, definitely partnering with eighteen other um, entrepreneurs uh, across the state. They chose us out of like five hundred um, uh, employment social enterprises. Is what is what we're calling um, our business at this point. Uh, fi just trying to figure out how can we figure out those key. Uh, performance indicators, man, and, turn, and make sure that, that that double bottom, that double line bottom is on point. That's right. Well, uh, you said you ran into Reggie and all so yeah, I ran into Reggie, man, and uh, Reggie now is a photographer. He's doing some great work. Wow, he's doing some great work, man. Okay. Reg just like really so holding you, it down. You, you ran into Reg at, at Rayburn, and uh, Reg was an asshole. Yeah, Reg stayed. You know, yeah, Reg know, stayed right? in and out the blocks. Reg, Reg will fight. 
Reg will curse you out. Reg will jump on the free man. He'll end up in sun. You he'll end up on, on on snow when he when his housing on wind. Snow is the blocks at uh, cell blocks. Works cell blocks. At, yeah, uh, shout out, shout out, Rayburn. But uh, yeah, definitely. So um, once we started Project Detour, started with Pat, Vladdy, all of us was you know um, the board in that space. So. Uh, we seen how Reg and it was a countless other Reg's that was a part of that, and we seen their development in that space. Uh, once we start showing them that they can take ownership in their de- in their own personal development, we seen it. You know, understanding that we're not just gonna talk about Sigmund Freud and Eric Burns. We're not gonna it's talk right. about the three personality right. traits. Okay, we understand. We know you understand what they are, but these is who created, it, and this is how they created them, and we can do the same. And once we seen that built that brotherhood, and Reg turned from. A write up every week to a write up and no write ups in two three years. So yeah. we see that it's working. We yeah. see that they start own taking ownership and accountability for their own actions. Why can't that be replicated out here? And that's what you're doing now. I came home in 2011, man. Project Detour been, was founded in 2013. Once I figured out how business was supposed to look. So tell us about. So you came home in 2011. Mm-hmm. Tell us about uh, you transition out. Some of the challenges you had, and then let's kind of talk about all the. This dude's got his hand in a hundred different pots that he created. Right. I'm not talking about yeah. pots that other people created That's that he's right. jumping into. He right. created. He created those pots. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about that. But tell us about the challenges you face coming home. Um, I always was a smart guy. I could I could say like I know how to read and write. So the challenges that I faced were systemic challenges. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, because the physical challenges, I was able to maneuver around them. For an example, um, I came home on a Wednesday. Uh, third Friday, I was working as a crane mechanic. Never touched a crane a day in my life. Don't know what a crane looked like. But I was hired as a crane operator. <laughs> right? <laughs> Riding down 4th Street. Turned down Engineers Road. See some cool signs. Crane operators hired now. Crane operators hired now. I pulled into H&E. Shout out H&E Equipments. Uh, pulled in the H&E parking lots. Sat down. One guy come out there. I said, hey, man, what you do? He said, I'm a crane operator. I said, what y'all operating? He said, man, it's a walk 7200s, 4100s, 4000s. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, cool, cool, cool. I got that. So look, cool, cool. I go home. I got and, my driver's license. Uh, I, look, I just got my driver's license. I'm 34 years old, man. I just got my driver's license for the first time in my life. I'm happy, right? Right. So, Pam, I go home and YouTube your university. YouTube University, I jumped on Shout YouTube. Shout out YouTube University, oh, that's right. Man, jumped Big on YouTube, jumped on YouTube, man. Um, put in Manitowoc 4100, 41,000, 7200s, 72,000s. And they told me, man, like, this is what you do. This is how you start it. This is how you, you know, grease your lines, before, check your lines before you get in there. So next day I went over there. I went, went back to H&E, filled out an application. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? I checked no. If I check, yeah, they're not even going to talk to me, right? right. I don't blame you. Yeah, right. I check no. I'm all so for it. I support it. I check no. So uh, so uh, they, they, they they took my application that day. They called me back the next day. Actually, it was the head because, you know, minority crane operators are nine and void. Yeah, high demand. Yes, yes, yes. Nine and void. Not like really, really nine and void. And I ain't no shit about no crane. I ain't know you can make $50 operating the crane for 10 minutes. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that. You yes, know what I'm sir. saying? $50 an hour and you up there 12 hours a day, but you're only working for 10 minutes, 15 it, minutes. Yeah. So um, I went in there. I went in there the next day. They called me, and I went in there the next day. Had my nice shoes on, you know, my suit. I'm, I'm job ready. You know, I'm practicing. I'm ready for this. I'm prepared. Went in there, sort of man like, uh, you can start a forty one. I'm like, yeah, I can start. He said, come on, let's go. We don't need the interview. I just want to see if you could do it. So we went out there. I walked around the crane, looked up under it, popped the pop the bottom where the where the where the lines was at. You know, I always check your grease lines. When I did that, said, hey, come on, man, we gonna get you trained. We got one, my professional. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so you know, that was basically all one. it took. So I, I worked there. I worked there for like my first two and a half, three years home. Let right? me ask you a question. They, uh, the, 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 the no box on the application that, that never came up. It never came up. It never came up until my passion of what I wanted to do in life. It started really burning me because I started getting frustrated with waking up in the morning. Working for somebody else? And not really working for somebody else. I'm not aligning myself with what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, I feel you. You know, so, I uh, so I'm making good money. I'm, at this point, I'm a crane mechanic. You know, I done, I, did, I done went to training. You know, I, done, I done started getting some things to really, like, put me in a position to be this operator. Right. But I'm waking up in the morning, and I'm like... Not happy. Yeah. 
not. You know, I'm walking. You don't feel yeah. like you're fulfilling your purpose. I'm in a tool room, and in the conversations that I was having a year ago, I'm not having these conversations with these people. I'm not feeling it, and I'm starting to see myself drift more into uh, Project Detour. You know, because now I'm starting to take my check, and I'm taking young kids in my community, and we go and get some chicken and sit under the park and talk for four to five minutes, asking them what they need. Now I'm help taking my check, and now I'm helping them get school uniforms and putting shoes on their feet and attending the football games and trying to help out with the coaches and talking to the students. And then I started actually getting in tune with the courts because a lot of my young right. brothers had had records. You know, right. they were I had to sign them off on my reconnaissance because they, they daddy in jail and their mom out on drugs. So I started seeing that I was needed in the space that I wasn't occupying. I was getting money. I'm straight. I'm driving a Rose. I'm not. I'm about to say a Rose. I'm driving a, a, a Range Rover. You know, this is in '13. You know, I got a '12 Range Rover. You know, came just came out of BMW. I'm doing good. Bought by H and E Crane money. Yes, 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 Thank you, yes, H&E. yes definitely, definitely, <laughs> mechanic definitely. money. That is definitely. Yeah. <laughs> but when you're not, um, but when you're not aligned with your values in life, man, uh, you can have all the riches in the world. It's not gonna sit right with you. You know, it's not, it's it's not going to feel, because right now, right now, man, um, I feel like I'm in the best place in my life that I have been in my life. And I look at every day as me getting better than I was yesterday, because my worst day out here is subsides the best day I had inside of there. That's right. You know what I mean? So, you know, it oversees it. It just, it just demolishes. So, So no comparison. From, from Mm -hmm. H&E. Uh, you just said, "Hey, look, I, yeah, I'm I gotta go. Far. I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta go. Um, I gotta, st- I gotta start what I want to do. I want to start my passion." So what was next? So Project Detour was next. Project Detour, full fledged. Um, got the board, got the bylaws, uh, got the policies and procedures in order. Got everybody on the card. Uh, so we just started doing a lot of mentoring in the city, and then I went back to school. So now it's me running the organization and attending Delgado Community College full time. Get my yeah, shout out Delgado. Big shout out to God What's Delgado. What's that mascot? Uh, 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 the Patriot. The Patriot. Yeah, they the they're Patriot. Delgado Patriot. And if I got you wrong, I'm down bad. Shout out Delgado. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna go with a it. A Buccaneer, or something, yeah. something like that. A Buccaneer or a yeah. Patriot. But yeah, so definitely um, going for my getting my criminal justice degree. Actually, I have like eight more credits that I need, so I'll be graduating next year. Uh, and it Are took, you still going right now? Yeah, I mean, I'm attending Suno right now. Shout out Suno. Shout out Suno. Shout out Suno. Shout out Suno. So it's a lot that I'm doing, man. I'm trying to better myself in all aspects. You know, not just on my, not just my 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 personal outside life, but my internal being. Like all of that comes into the space, and I don't think that I'm gonna be fully. Fully, fully healed until I get exonerated. So that's what I'm working on right now. Passion, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm working. I'm working with my. I'm working with the district attorney now in Jefferson Parish. We've been having maybe a a few meetings, a a couple meetings, and that's how I want to close the film with him saying, "Yeah, Kiana, uh, we we think that you have, you know, you have done everything that you've needed to done need to do um, in the course of your life, man, and we we want to honor your wishes and and get rid of this." Are you working with with um, Paul Connick No the organization That does all the The, uh, the Innocent Project Yeah So uh, Funny story about that man uh, The Innocent Project They don't work with Individuals who's free Oh they only do yes. Incarcerated yes. Yes. yes Yes And that was a problem That I really didn't Understand when I went to them Cause I Trust me I, I, I probably Ruffled every feather in the state of Louisiana, trying to see what can I do until I was just like, you know what? Just keep walking in your purpose. It's not what you're doing, it's where you're going. Right. Yes. You know, so right. that's yep. the overall that's the overall piece of this entire t- synopsis, man. But right. I think that that's when I'm gonna get completely holistically healed, where I could be able to get exonerated. You know, I've done a lot of work, and then once I get exonerated, I wanna, you know, continue to be a force. I want to ask you this: uh, a person and, and I'm completely guilty of all the crimes that I committed. So I, I, when I was in prison, I had to, go ahead. Allegedly committed. Allegedly committed. <laughs> no, I did all that. Uh, and he was convicted, convicted. So it's over. Yeah, it's over with. Um, so I, I was in prison and, and I had to swallow the pill. Okay. You done a lot of dumb shit mm-hmm. and, uh, and I'm paying, I'm paying for it. Right. Um, and, and, but I, I can't imagine the mental, that a person must go through uh, in your situation that spent 17 years in prison and not 
have done the crime, dude. Can you? <laughs> I don't want you to go into great detail because I know you died. But I, I, what did? The, what's the mental process for that? So it was basically um, piggybacking what you just said. Mm-hmm. You know, I have done a lot of shit in my life. I have, I have, uh, I wasn't a choir boy, you know what I'm saying, when I was out here. But a lot of things that I didn't do, it shouldn't have amount to that sentence, that such severe sentence. Um, but just being open-minded, like you can imprison me physically, but you can't entrap my mind. Uh, that was kind of like like the yeah. cage bird sings, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I and I strive myself on education yeah. because I was so uneducated sitting in this trial. Only thing I could understand is objection, overrule, sustain. Objection, overrule, sustain. What that mean? What that mean? I know that I know when they say that the judge says something that that counters what they say. So I felt stupid. It felt like I was in Charlie Brown. That's how my entire trial felt. And my trial was like nine days, the first one. Might I add that it was a non-unanimous jury. Shout out to the RMUJC. Now it's going to be a unanimous yes, jury. Yes, yes, You want to explain what that means real quick? Yeah, so, for our laymen? Yeah, for the laymen. Uh, non-unanimous jury, I was found guilty on uh, two counts of first-degree man- murder non-unanimously, meaning that one person out of the 12 said that I was innocent, saying that the, 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 the state did not prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt, which the law states that you should be judged by a jury of your peers and unanimously yes. deliberated upon. Uh, but you know, um, Louisiana, excuse me, Louisiana and Oregon were the last two states that upheld the non-unanimous um, jury pool, which means that 10 people can say that you're guilty and two people can say that you that they don't believe that you're guilty and you still can be sent to prison for, for life. Uh, and... That happened to me twice. My first trial was 11 to 1. I was found guilty and sentenced to life. Uh, and in 1998, with the great help of Christopher Abley, my appellate attorney, shout out Chris, uh, he put together a wonderful brief um, and my trial and my case was remanded and set aside uh, for further proceedings. And I was sent back to Jefferson Parish, tried again for second degree murder. And I was found guilty again. That jury deliberations were 10 to 2. So two people said this time that, oh, no, nah, he didn't he didn't do that. And 10 people said yes. And I was found guilty again on a lesser charge, which was manslaughter. And they sentenced me to 34 years uh, under Act 138, which gave me 17 years inside of the, uh, a penal institution and 17 years remaining on parole. Yeah. Right. So um, and, and, and honestly, uh, we have right now currently over five thousand and seven hundred people that are incarcerated serving life from our, our high numbers on a non-unanimous jury. Uh, that PJI, shout out PJI, uh, Promise uh, Justice Promise Justice Initiative. Uh, yeah, they're working closely uh, trying to get those individuals home on that. But in 2018, I had the, man, that was that was one of the plateau peak campaigns in my existence. So uh, I do want to talk about the documentary that I had the fortunate privilege of watching. Kiana's uh, Mission. Yeah, man. I'm going to tell you. I, and I said at the beginning of this podcast, uh, it takes a little bit to make me cry. My wife would say different. She says I'm a big teddy bear. I don't believe that. I believe I'm a big lion. But uh, I did, man. I, I teared up, and uh, it, it touched me on multiple um, multiple spots in the documentary. I want you to talk about that a little bit, and then uh, talk about 40 for 40 and, and then uh, Roots. But uh, just tell, uh, tell everybody about what inspired the documentary and how long you've been doing it. Man, definitely. Kiana's Mission uh, is a documentary, like I said a little bit earlier, it's a, it's a story about resilience. You know, it's a story about uh, overcoming the hurdles of life uh, and coming out the end still feeling prosperous. You know what I mean? Uh, and I've been shooting this documentary maybe about, when we're in 22 now, so maybe about nine years, uh, having the ability to get um, introduced to a camera when I came home, I, I I learned that the camera is therapeutic. You know what I mean? Being able to That's sit right. down and, 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 and tell pieces about you and not feel vulnerable. You know what I mean? Because you know that eventually some, somebody may see this and it may help change their lives. So what I did was um, I just walked around with the camera with me all day taking uh, basic photos. And then I was like, you know what, bro? I think it's time that you start putting your life in perspective how can you how can you get your story 
uh, heard because everybody has a story. Not everybody make it to cable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like everybody has their their intention. So just having the ability to be in a position to where my life work it it it, it needs to be televised. So uh, working with Roots Renewal, shout out Roots. Um, shout I'm out the e- Big Roots. I'm the ED over there. At Roots. What's Roots? Roots is a reentry organization um, geared to our young men. 18 to 26 re-entering incarcerated re-entering home from incarceration is that in new orleans yes Jefferson new parish? orleans new orleans actually we're in three different parishes okay. we're in new orleans we're in jefferson and we're in terrible okay okay uh i'm um, just being just being available for those young men and 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 what we do is we purchase blighted properties uh throughout the city's area uh rehab them uh give give the guys soft job skills so that they may be productive in the construction field if they choose to that's awesome yeah definitely they get so, any type of certification yes that? yes definitely and so i pride myself on training Okay. You know what I mean? I, I think that we can't go through life without the proper tools. That's you know right. what I mean? So uh, once they come to Roots, what we do, and you in the documentary, you you can see that I have that camera setting up interviewing my young men because that's the first initial engagement. I want you to understand that I want to know how you were when you first come to me. Right. And then throughout the middle course of the space, we're going to do another one to, just to do a recap, a summary on what you have done. Um, I use the poverty stoplight method. Shout out Dr. Martin Burke. Um, man, right. you, he running for president of Paraguay, man. You know I got you. You my dog. I'm on got your team. Uh, you already know. Uh, but yeah, so um, I was introduced to the poverty stoplight, Dr. Martin Burke, uh, maybe in about 2017. Uh, Is he from New Orleans? No, he's from Paraguay. Oh, Paraguay. That's yeah. a country? Yeah, that's a that's a, that's, Where yeah, is that that's like in uh, uh, I'm East. geographically. Yeah, that's, that's kind of like, I thought that's it was like the Middle I East. That's kind of like, like in the East. That's kind of like in the Middle East. Okay, um, cool. Over there by Iraq and uh, Iran and Afghanistan, but not in that oh, area. Oh, he's running for the president of that country? Of that country, yes. He's already the secretary. Man, my boy he's got already president, <laughs> president friends. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm actually in this book. You could go check it out. Um, Who Owns Poverty? Yeah, Kiana okay. Calloway is in that space. Right. Uh, he's a professor at Georgetown get University. Your before we leave. Oh, yes, man. Definitely. Definitely. I got I'm some things. Need it now before you blow. Right. Really? <laughs> I got some things on the horizon, man. I but know uh, you do. Yeah, so working with Dr. Martin Burke, um, we sat down and he told me about how he uh, identified how he broke poverty down into six dimensions income and infrastructure, education and employment housing and motivation and integrity and insurance mm. and it shows it shows how we can put these indicators into a life map so that you can actually see what poverty looks like instead of feeling it now you can see it so how does it work uh, as far as showing the guys like it, is it a progress chart or something so yeah definitely okay. it, it, it it gives back in data on it, it comes into the red red yellow and green so okay. if just say that uh, you're f- so what I did was I restructured that model because the way that poverty looks in Paraguay, it don't look this way in uptown New Orleans. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Right. So what we did was we developed the New Orleans spectrum. I was the only I'm the I'm the um, um, parenting hub here in the United States that had this data tool. But anyway, so what we did was we identified if you're coming home from incarceration, it's practically like you've been you're bankrupt. You're coming home after filing bankruptcy. You hasn't you have nothing. So income, transportation, housing, internet access, a clean bed to sleep in, all of those are indicators of poverty, but we don't understand that. So if we come home, very vital. They're vital to you re-entering and they're vital to recidivism. Yes. So if you if you start with if you start with roots of renewal um, in the twenty six survey and out of the twenty six questions you have twenty five reds, we got work to do. Like we got work to do. So they fill out an assessment. Yes, and, and then they you track their progress it, it, as based we work on forward. That assessment as we work forward. The the, the, the tools that they need. Red to yellow. Red to, green. to yellows to green. Nice. Right? And and we and we try to achieve that in four months because <clears throat> Roots Renewal is a sixteen week job training program. Mm-hmm. Inside of that program, which Project Detour is over the programming side of it, it gives personal development courses, financial literacy courses. Uh, it gives um, critical thinking, transaction analysis. Like we deal with the per, the, the rehabilitation of the being, right? Of the because individual. of the individual, we need you to be uh, in the right space if we want to send you to this job. So we got to help you build this resume. Right. 
Uh, we partner with local construction companies throughout those areas so that long term employment is definitely After in the, the winds. Program, exactly. Yeah. Along along with lifetime membership because once you alumni perks because once you get in the roots, man, you're 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 a little brother now. Yeah. You know, and it's not that you just come through a program or a project. No, you got my seven numbers. You could call my seven numbers at any given time. And they do that right now, you know what I mean? That's uh, awesome, man. Yeah, definitely. So uh, that's that's Roots of Renewal. Um, I, I, I began to, eat, to be the ED at Roots of Renewal in 2019. I started there as the programs manager, uh, just dealing with the programs for Project Detour. I was contracted in through Amy and Brendan, who was uh, the actual founders of this space, uh, as the programs manager. And I, I definitely just dealt with peer support groups, like how can we – uh, develop a curriculum that's going to show the impact of these individuals actually re-entering. You know what I mean? Man, we got a recidivism rate of 99. We got a recidivism rate. Hold up, hold up, hold up. We got a nine recidivism rate of 98.9%. Yeah. Only one brother. And that's Javel. He comes home next 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 month, I believe. Shout out Javel. We Big got you out. when you get out here, man. You know what I mean? So it's just trying to just trying to stay um activated, active, you know, implying myself into a space to where I know that I'm I'm desperately needed. Man, you're doing it. Um I also uh, uh, an Instagram page that, that caught my eye that you also set up and, and it's a project that you work on. Uh, forty for forty. Tell uh tell forty for forty worldwide. Forty for forty A what they need to look up, um, yeah, and then definitely. B, what what uh, prompted it, and and how that went. Definitely, man. Like I said, um, during COVID, um, me, uh, Dorado Brooks, shout out Dorado, Mark Carey, shout out Mark. Um, yeah, we definitely we traveled we travel Louisiana, man, and we highlight we 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 had an opportunity interviewing over four hundred individuals that's formerly incarcerated, uh, forty incarcerated, four hundred and over four hundred formerly incarcerated entrepreneurs. A lot of these individuals have their own businesses, started their own businesses. We went to the, we went to donut shops. We went to we went to sandwich shops. We went to we went to twisted wings, twisted burgers. You know, right, we went to right. we man, we went we went to we went out there while people was cutting grass and washing cars, like everywhere that they were. When we say we was in their space, we was pulling up on them for like an hour. You know, what I mean, and we had the conversation, man. Tell me what it's like after incarceration. Man, the stories were beautiful, you know what I mean? So I just had to try to figure out how can we take that collage and turn it into power because our stories are powerful within themselves, right? So uh, since so during COVID, we, me, Dorado, Mark, we sat down on the videos. We kept going over them. So last year, th- actually this year, uh, I said, man, we need to do something with this. Let's drop a, fo- let's drop a, uh, a Black History Month project. Mm. So that's where the Instagram um, came from, you know, dropping. We dropped one story Every day of Black History for Month days, for 28 20, days. So you're going to see 20. Nice. Yeah, and you, we're going to do the same thing next Black History Month. We're going to try to replicate that. So uh, it's like an annual thing. Yes, okay, yes, cool. yes. It don't make sense to just have it once. You yeah. know what I mean? So, um, yeah, we're going to correlate. We correlated stories. We drop one every day. And we correlated these stories of impacted survivors today. And if you could read the, 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 the actual captions, we're putting them in the spaces of 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 uh, um W E D Du Bois, you know what I mean? Okay. We put them in we put them in the spaces with Mega Evers. We put them in the spaces with Fred Hampton. Like we're putting them in the same energy to let them know that man, the narrative that they that 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 our ancestors were speaking, and I ain't gonna say ancestors. I'm talking like 40 years ago, six, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. <laughs> You know what I mean? The right. same narrative that they were speaking, you know, we're still saying that same narrative. And I think that, you know, we need to wake up and understand, like, how can we put a face to pain? Like, they went through a lot, but they're overcomers. They're survivors. So, yeah, go check out. Go punch into Instagram, 40 for 40 Worldwide, 40 for 40 Worldwide. And if you are in any other state that has a jail, contact us because we're coming to your state. All right. So... I don't ever do this, by mm-hmm. the way. Mm-hmm. Um, I normally sit back behind that camera unless I'm running my podcast. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to tell you what, What's you your inspired podcast, me. Yeah. Local Leaders of Podcast, Bloody Angola. I produce Real Life, Real Crime with Woody Overton and uh, got, a, got a bunch more coming out. I've listened to everything that you said and uh, inspiring, inspiring shit. Uh, I'll tell you. Real shit, too. What impre- yes, yes, exactly. And what impresses me the most about you is you said something a few minutes ago. You give back a lot. A true leader gives back. 
Yes, uh, we we are raised in our lives to believe being first in anything is is the leader, right? Mm-hmm. You're winning. Now, giving back's winning. You have done nothing but have have people, in my opinion, people try to hold you down. And it seems like the harder you get held down, the, the harder you the push harder back. Push. Yes, and that's that's uh, an innate quality. It's rare and impressive, man. So you know, I'm, I wanted to obviously shout you out for that. But I have one question: before all this happened in your life, were you always someone that was resilient like that? That just had that mindset, you know? So in the film. I, that's the question I asked my mom because uh, when, when I went to prison at 16, what I knew when I was a boy, I thought as a boy, I acted as a boy, and I, I, I moved as a boy. But when I turned into a man, I had to toss those boyish ways to the side. Right. Yeah. So I forgot how I was at six, before 16. Right. But when I asked my mom that in the documentary, like that's the very first sentence that I asked her because. I had to try to phantom like, damn, where was I? I have these memories. I have these ideas. I knew I was a dog in football. I should have supposed to been in Florida State. They were looking to, to, to recruit me, quarterback, wide receiver. Like, my, I had a future. Yes. And I ended up in prison. So when I asked my mom that, that's the first thing my mom said. You always were resist, resilient. You always were a leader. You, I, 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 you got your ass whooped a lot. I broke a lot of fingernails. But you always were that leader. So that kind of puts me into this place that she felt that I was a leader, but I always knew that I was a great follower. Yeah. Because I never tell nobody to do nothing that I wouldn't do. And that's with campaigns. I'm going to knock on doors. I'm not going to sit here and plan something and say, okay, you're going to knock on 100,000 doors, 1,000 doors, you're going to knock on 100 doors, you're going to knock on 60 doors, I'm going to knock on 700 doors. Love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I know that exactly. this got to get done. And if, it don't, if I don't do it, it's not going to get done. Yeah. And and people would see you do that, and that's inspiring to them. Mm-hmm. I used to tell people, uh, you want to be a great leader, find your broom. Yes. Yes. Always. When, yes. You, when you're leading other people, always show them what to do mm-hmm. by doing it. Because mm-hmm. if you're if you're going to do it, if you own a company and you're out there sweeping the floor. They shouldn't have nothing to say about sweeping the floor. That's right. Not <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Find your exactly. broom, people. Exactly. Exactly. And that's and that's and that's the whole thing. Like a lot of people um, want to get engaged into anything dealing with uh, life, profession, building. But first, you need to understand is what is your why? Yes. Why do you do what you do? If you don't wake up in the morning and love where you go, you're gonna hate yourself. Amen. God gave us all something that we that He sprinkled in something inside of all of us that only you have. And that's what you can wake up and do effortlessly. Like you come in here and set this up effortlessly. You can close your eyes and put the put everything in the space because you know that's what you have to do. And it's not it's not an institution. It's not a program. It's because I know this. This is what I want to do. Yes. You know, and that's what I feel like. Uh, my situation is not demeaning. I'm not angry, and that's the best thing about it. When I sit down with DAs and 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 and, and attorneys and sheriff officers and making these connections, they like, well, why are you coming in here? I we no, y'all didn't do that. The system did this. Yes. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build a bridge to where this don't happen to another Kiana. I'm not mad at you. I'm not angry with you. I don't want to come home and be no disrupt, disruptive person, individual. I want to come home, live my best life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. And see how can I be a preventative method for any other young at-risk black underprivileged kid that don't have any resources, single mother household, uh, don't have to go through and endure the pain that I have, I've had to endure. That's I'm a, amazing. I'm a, I'm a flagpole. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a model. You know what I mean? And I, I I walk that space. You know what I mean? I walk it like I talk it. And I'm in every space. I know yeah. we could sit down and talk to the governor. I'm going to speak my mind. I'm going to tell him what I feel or believe is efficient in this area. But it's not my words. It's because my boots are on the ground. Yeah, right. I have town halls. I have community teaching sessions. I sit down and ask my community, what do you want, need, and desire? Write it on a piece of paper. Let's figure out. Because we have people in position that, that have our best interests at heart. Yeah. But if you don't voice your opinion, you will never know. Practice your democracy. Figure out who's running. Don't just put nobody in no seat because then the mill's going to go up. You know what mills are? That's your taxes. Yes. Our society has feared putting people like Kiana mm-hmm. in 
positions Not with mental. power, mm -hmm. polit <laughs> political positions, and and to be quite frank, these are the people that we need to be there to be a voice for the community. Uh, if 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 you don't have somebody from the community. Um, they're not going to be able to speak for the people. At all. You That's know? right. And I, for one, am glad you're not uh, operating a crane no more. <laughs> me too. Because yeah, you you're living in your gift right yeah, now, my brother. Man, see, right. Well, man. look, the, the, the whole purpose of, of the podcast is to do exactly what Kiana did today, is to highlight, A, the trials and tribulations, uh, but B, <clears throat> to really hone in on the success story and, 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 and Kiana's uh, the epitome of success, Shane's yes. uh, uh, success story in and of itself. Yes. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm glad you was able to come today. Man, I'm glad I you invited me. We talked about yeah, it, you know? know, and I'm like, get me in there. You're like, yeah, all right, we so we get started. recently at uh, yeah. Mike Anderson. Mike but, Anderson's. And, uh, yeah. and, I, and I told him I need to have him on. But, man, I'm just, uh, I knew a little bit about you, but now I know a lot about you, man. You're just an inspiring dude, and I can understand why you got a lot of guys in, in your area, just uh, wherever you go. That look up to you, man, because you're just full of wisdom. So hey, keep on up? doing it. Hey, I appreciate hey, Scott for coming. Appreciate you. For and I, want, I want to thank my boy Scott yeah. Yeah. because Definitely. I'm going to tell you what. It's the second week in a row. You know Vlad? Yeah, I know Vlad. Here? We're okay. close with Vlad. Second week in a row, he's had somebody Knock come in and inspire the hell out of me. Knock it out the park. And I've gotten They're chill bumps yes. both times. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, park, man. just amazing, amazing People, amazing. Like you said, everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. My my premise for Local Leaders of Podcast is every business owner has a story, and mm -hmm. I want to tell it because right. that's a struggle when you own a business, yes, right? Uh, same thing with life. And you don't necessarily, you know, uh, have to be a business owner to have a story. Exactly. And, uh, and your story is amazing. I, I look forward to hearing this gentleman's Shane's story. Shane's coming right back. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Tell him where you baby. get that hat at, Shane. Hey, man, I get this hat at a flea market in, on the West Bank of New Orleans. In Algiers. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. The West right Bank. West Bank. The, the best bank? The best That's bank. Right. Uh, right. Hey, man, look, uh, uh, before we close out, uh, 24 years. That's how long I've done in prison. Uh, I'm going to say probably at the 15-year mark or the 16-year mark, I, I live by this motto. Starve my distractions and feed my focus. Mm -hmm. mm. Starve like my distractions. Feed my now focus. that I'm free, I live it even harder now because distractions is more because oh, of my liberty. Yes. Yes. I have the liberty to go wherever I want to go now. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. So the distractions are even more uh, devastating because they come with a penalty. If I make the wrong choice, the wrong decision. A harsh penalty. That's right. I go back was a hundred years ago to eighteen hundreds, yeah. and I live under the ten, the ten two law, the mm -hmm. nine, nine, yeah, nine unanimous jury. jury all over again. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I live by that man, and I pride myself. That's a great man, Kiana. Look, that That's was Shane's mental. intro to his next podcast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Stay tuned. Appreciate y'all watching today. Appreciate you, man. Tug in, plug in, plug in. Work hard. Work hard.